Uh, today we have uh, a very significant subject which is drawing you all here and that has to do with what's happening with the revitalization of the historic Golden Gate Village. The Golden Gate Village public housing site was built in 1960 as part of a widespread urban renewal and effort in post-World War II Marin County, an unincorporated community in Marin County. Today, Golden Gate Village stands as a public housing property within Marin County. After nearly 60 years of use and long periods of low and deferred um, maintenance, the site faces a significant backlog of unmet and unfunded capital requirements. Faced with the limited options to address those needs, Marin Housing Authority, the Golden Gate Village, uh, maybe, um, have worked together over the past several years through a multi-step process to identify ways in which the affordable housing assets of Golden Gate Village can be preserved, updated, and sustained for future generations of low-income and moderate-income Marin County residents. At Marin Coalition's luncheon today, MHA Executive Director Louis Jordan will provide an overview of the Golden Gate community strategy, history, and detail the steps toward meeting the revitalization goals as part of the solution for the county housing shortage. It's part of that. Keisha Bulwer, Keisha Bulwer of the Michaels Organization, which is a national organization that I believe has been involved in many of similar projects throughout the country. Uh, Will is also here uh, to detail her firm's role in the next stages focused on determining feasibility. Royce McLemore, president of the Golden Gate Village Residence Council, will share her perspective, revitalization strategy, and the Golden Gate Village ideas on sustainability and best practices to be incorporated into the revitalization. As a background, Louis Jordan is executive director of the Marin Housing Authority, an agency that serves over 3,200 housing units, has an annual budget of $50 million, to put that in perspective. City of Nevada has a $40 million budget, so that's, that's a big number, $50 million. In his role, Lewis seeks to further develop and implement processes to improve financial viability of the agency by creating and nurturing community and stakeholder uh, relations. He's worked in public housing for over 15 years, where he has held positions as CEO of the Chicago Housing Authority Executive Director of both the Rockford Housing Authority and the Housing Authority of Cook County. Keisha Boulevard is Vice President of Development for the Michaels Organization, the lead consultant to the Golden Gate Villages. She brings over 15 years of experience in multifamily development um, mostly in Los Angeles and San Diego counties. Royce McLemore serves as an elected official on both the Marin County or the Marin City Community Services District uh, for over 30 years and as president of the Golden Gate Village Residence Council and Board of Directors. Royce is also executive director of Women Helping All People since its inception in 1990. She's been a long time, a long term policy uh, specialist at local and county levels 
to improve living conditions in that community. take us up to the engagement that's occurred since um, that brings us up to right now. And then I'll hand it off to the other colleagues on the, um, on the podium. I wanted to start off in that very warm introduction. Thanks again. I, I want us to look at this revitalization and this whole process, not just about Golden Gate Village, but really about the need for affordable housing in our community in general. Marin County has a very, very specific need in creating more affordable housing. Um, the Housing Authority, uh, as mentioned, we have 500 public housing units throughout the, the county. Um, Golden Gate Village is our biggest property, and I think it bears knowing that it's our only property, our only HUD funded property, property, excuse me, that houses families. We have two other properties in Mill Valley, uh, two properties in San Rafael, and one in Nevada. But GGV is the only, and those properties are housed by senior and disabled individuals. So the only place in our HUD portfolio that we can have families is go to Game Village. Um, our budget, we receive, this year we'll get $53 million from HUD, annual budget of which $40 million is a pass-through that goes directly to Section 8 landlords. I think that they are saying. So we have $30, $13 million to run our day-to-day -day operations in both public housing and Section 8. I'm assuming that most of you know the difference in our public housing and Section 8 program. Public housing is the 500 six units that we manage. We have another 2,100 Section 8 um, um, partners, and there are some of you in the audience may even be landlords, where monies come directly from HUD through the housing authority to landlords. So I think it's very important as we look at that that number, 53 million, the reality is that it's only about 13 million. Um, as we, we, we look at Golden Gate Village, um, historic property, been in existence about 60 years, um, has a tremendous amount of capital need. Around the country, HUD has somewhere in the neighborhood, or has suggested that somewhere in the neighborhood between 35 and $50 billion of deferred maintenance on public housing property. Marin City, we, right now we did a, something called a physical needs assessment. Uh, back in 2015, every five years we're, we're required to do have a consultant, a group come in and say, assess the physical needs of our property. Back in 2015, that assessment suggested we had $16 million of immediate capital need. And, and actually, to bring the property up to modern standards, it was suggested that we need around 63 million. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to that 13 million number I talked about earlier, right? So from the federal government, which is our primary funding source for public housing. From the federal government, we get about $800,000 a year to spread over all six of those properties. You know, I'm looking at some mathematicians in here, right? So $800,000 to spread over six properties, and we have $16 million, and that was five years ago, in immediate cost. So it, it brings us to a point of asking ourselves, how, how do we address this? How, how do we address the need to improve the, the quality of life for our, our, our good tenants who live in Golden Gate Village? And, and, and I'll tell you, the balance is more than just, as my colleagues would say, brick and mortar. We're talking quality of life. We're talking about 
How do we address barriers to employment? How do we address barriers to education? How do we address those issues that are there that are, are preventing families in that community from really enjoying some of the quality of life that most of us in Marin County enjoy. And so the revitalization is about moving us to a place where we can do that. It's part brick and mortar, but it's also part human capital, where we need to work in and support families and children alike in the community on ways in which they can enjoy some of the, 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 the wonderful opportunities with some kind of consistency, as I'm assuming, I'm assuming that most of us in the room have and continue to enjoy. So over time, we've engaged in a community process. I'm looking around the room, I'm seeing people that have been a part of that process. You know, going back to 2009, almost what, 10 years ago, the, um, the, the county board put together an advisory, formed an advisory group to really start to look at how do we address these issues? How do we address these issues of improved housing? And even back then, um, but probably more now, HUD has made it very, very clear. <clears throat> housing authorities, not just Marin, housing authorities around the country, you have to find a way to make up this deficit because the federal government is not going to do it. We've been encouraged to get into what's called a public-private partnership, working with private entities that understand property, understand property management, understand community rebuilding. And we've been highly encouraged to the extent that probably once a month, we get a call from our local HUD office asking a question, what are you doing to reposition public housing? And that question comes to me from the perspective of, right now, if I said I, I need to borrow 60, 80 million dollars from uh, one of our lending institutions, Chase, Bank of America, and to do some renovation at Golden Gate Village. Under the current process, I cannot go to a bank and say, loan me money to fix up this property because the first thing the bank is gonna ask me is what? What kind of collateral do you have? You can't collateralize federal property, okay? So, so when HUD talks about Lewis, what can the housing authority do to reposition? They have a number of tools that they offer to take public housing out of the public housing realm and, and without getting into a lot of the different tools, looking at a way to put it on a Section 8 platform. And what that Section 8 platform says is that I'll pay you, the landlord, whatever your going rate is for rent, but you got to worry about the leak in the ceiling, you got to worry about the, the crack in the door and things of that nature. So the reality is that that's the direction we're going. So over the last, I guess since 2009, we've had a number of phases of this engagement so that we can actually find a way to get to a revitalization strategy. Probably the cornerstone of, of the engagement that we set out to complete is something called the, um, we, we, we developed a group of guiding principles. And if you can just bear with me, I'm gonna talk about these principles. These are principles that were, were developed in conjunction with the community. And as I speak to these different iterations of engagement, I think it's critically important that you understand that the community's been along with us every step of the way. The residents, the resident council, some stakeholders in the community, this has not been something done in a vacuum. We work collectively to move forward. So I'll, I'll just briefly go over the, the um, guiding principles. The first one says, and these are principles by which we move forward with this work. We want to protect existing go, uh, Golden Gate households and residents. Adopt a resident protection mechanism and use them uh, throughout the process. We want to restore Golden Gate Village's economic sustainability. Maintain a focus on development of resident skills and, and access to good jobs and enhance connections to job training, employment opportunities, and growth areas in, in industry. 
we want to assure resident participation throughout the planning and revitalization process. I just said on that. There, this is an inclusion, inclusive means of representation and participation through resident outreach, engagement, and involvement with decision-making bodies at meetings and convenings. We want to preserve the historic Marin ship heritage. Preserving a Marin City unique heritage should occur through inclusion and design, including art, architecture, infrastructure, naming, and signage, and through facilities such as kiosks that teach about the area's unique history as a manufacturing hub and home of a vibrant African American community. And doing this through the process is critical to achieving the goal of high quality revitalized housing. We want to promote high quality open space. Open space is a critical component of healthy communities. Play spaces, communal spaces, and green spaces allow community members to bond, develop relationships that lead to greater inclusion and vibrancy. These open spaces must be accessible accommodable, and to accommodate a, a variety of uses and be conducive of, of um, building community. And then the final one is to collaborate with the Marin County community to expand economic development and job training education opportunities for all GGV residents, Golden Gate Village. Any efforts should ensure that the opportunities created lead to sustainable job and growth industries, expand economic development, job training and education opportunities, must create a pipeline to growth industries and relevant educational pathways. So as I alluded to earlier, this is so much more than about building new housing. You know, this is about rebuilding and supporting the existing uh, building up community that, that is going on and going to get built. So that being said, and I'll wrap up here to give my other colleagues some opportunity. Uh, between 2014 and 2016, we, um, we had a series of what we call community working group meetings. And this is where we went to the community, kind of with a blank slate saying, what does a revitalized community look like? You know, what does this what, it, what can it look like? And it was, uh, let's build it, let's talk about what it is. You know, people talked about better housing. But people also talked about education. They talked about jobs. They talked about better economic opportunities. And, and this community work group was made up of people who live in Golden Gate Village, as well as people who live in the community, other stakeholders. During that time, we brought in experts, we brought in other housing authorities, um, um, directors, we brought in tenants from other housing authorities, we brought in um, different stakeholders to really ask ourselves, what does that, what does that revitalized community look like? As a result of these meetings, um, there were two options that came out of uh, the community working group. One option said, let's just look at a total rehab and keep things as is, but just really find a way to, to, to do a rehabilitation. The other option was to look at, at what's been come to known as a mixed income model where you increase density, but you also bring in services and things of that nature. And as a result of those two choices, our uh, Housing Authority Board directed staff and I, to bring someone in to do a study, it's called a feasibility study, of which of those options made, were most feasible. Were most feasible, particularly financially, most feasible in the way of actually being able to get them done. So we conducted, we had a, a consultant come in and do a feasibility study in 2017, and the result of that study suggested that we look at a model that would allow us to increase, we look at a model that would do, and I, I want to be very clear here, going back to one of the guiding principles, we, we, we talked about the residents and, and the notion of making sure they were involved. Looking at a model to make sure that we kept people in the community. So as we look at this revitalization strategy, one of the key components, and this came from people in the community, I don't want to leave my community. I'm concerned that if you give me a Section 8 voucher and you move me out of Marin City, I'll never get a chance to come back. 
I'm concerned about the receptivity of other communities in this county to having me and my family come and live there. I want to stay in my beloved. I want to stay in my beloved community where I've come to be very, very happy with my churches, with my schools, with all the surroundings. So that's where we, we came to that point of saying, okay, how do we make this happen while we honor what people are saying? And that brings us up to the notion of bringing a developer on board. And um, with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Keisha Bowyer, and she can speak to where we go as it relates to our partnership with you. Thank you. largest owner of affordable housing and with that we bring a lot of experience um, something that I always like to say is that development is a privilege not a right so we are very honored and privileged to be welcomed into Marin City to help facilitate the revitalization of Golden Gate Village uh, Michael's developed housing across the nation Mm -hmm. uh, I think our northernmost property is in Maine. We also have properties in Hawaii and everything in between. About 145,000 folks uh, call a Michael's managed property their home. So that's about half the size of Lorraine County. And we really um, like to say that we build and manage communities that live lives. And so, you know, with that responsibility, take real estate development as a spark for new investment, for renewed commitments uh, from the com community to lift the lives of our residents. So that's a little bit of the background uh, for my goals. And so when we received the RFQ from the Marin Housing Authority, we were really excited um, to, to offer our qualifications and be a part of a historic revitalization. So fortunately, we were selected. Um, there was a rigorous review panel, and we were just really delighted to be a part of this uh, revitalization, to work on historic property. We've had that experience in the past, um, so the challenges are, are nothing that, that can't be overcome in our experience. And I want to uh, point back to the $63 million need at Golden Gate Village. What our role is, is as a conduit to bring in private investment. One of the tools that we use is the Low Income Housing Tax Credit. It started in, uh, in 81 by Reagan. It's been one of the most successful tools in developing new uh, affordable housing and rehabilitating affordable housing. And so we serve to bridge that gap, to bring in private investment that will allow MHA to meet its uh, capital needs. And so that's really our role. Second role is, again, to use this revitalization as a spark. You know, if we are to re rehabilitate the buildings and that's it, we failed. We really would have failed. And so our goal as well is to work with residents to increase uh, opportunities for economic uh, sustainability, self-sufficiency, and growth. And so that's really, at the end of the day, what we want to see, is that the real estate revitalization has served as a spark and uh, a phase of future uplift at Golden Gate Village. Those are my brief comments. I'll be open for questions. Good afternoon. My name is Royce McMore, a longtime Marin County resident, raised up in Marin City, 
I am the mother of five children, 21 grandchildren, 20 living, seven great-grandchildren, a foster parent since 1990 for the county of Marin, with over 200 children that have come through my home, and out of those eight, I have been their legal guardian, so it's like having 10 children. I did a lot of, uh, I homeschooled my children until they were in the 6th, 7th, 8th grade in uh, a sophomore at Tam High School. So that was our life. After they went to public school, I needed to do something. <laughs> so I started looking around and what can I really give back? to Marin City. So I've been actively involved ever since in terms of one issue after another after another. I've been in this particular one, um, I just want to say, I guess it was in 1996, I was inducted into the Marin County Women Hall of Fame for social justice. However, it was after I was inducted that I have really been put in going through the fire for social justice and social change. But I'm still standing. <laughs> Briefly, um, Golden Gate Village, the history why, and maybe most of you may know that after the war, well, from the war, that's how black people ended up in Marin County to work in the uh, shipyard in South Alito. After the war, this county was looking for people to go back to where they came. Many left, but then many of our elders had no place to go and was making good money and decided that they were going to stay. So they had to stand up and resist the county of Marin. But thank God we did have, at that point in time, the first woman supervisor, Vera Schultz, who had compassion for poor black people that were left in Marin, in Marin City. She would come and visit and um, know what that life was after the war when we were living in wartime houses. She was determined to make a difference and she did. She went to uh, Washington, D.C., was able through the Marin County politics come back with the land. She also had uh, the first woman planner, Mary Summers, who uh, was right at her side to work on what are we gonna do with this property they enlisted Erin Green, who was Frank Lloyd Wright's West Coast partner, and brought them in to do this project. This project was done simultaneously with the Marin Civic Center. So these men were in Erin Green's office doing their sketches and their what have you, one for the Civic Center, and one for Golden Gate Village. And like I said, when uh, we met with SHPO, some people may say that Golden Gate Village has a lot of Frank Lloyd Wright influence, and rightfully so, as well as Aaron Green with the Civic Center. With this Golden Gate Village being built, it wasn't sure ordinary uh, building of a new complex just like our Marin Civic Center. Erin Green was determined that people are people regardless of who you are. And with that, he set out to really no holes barred in terms of designing one of the most beautiful, or the, the most beautiful public housing properties in the United States of America. I had a privilege in time for five years. I did speak, sit on the Marin County Housing Commission and got a chance to travel and saw there's no, nothing like it, nothing like it. 
just like there's nothing like our civic center. So in time, um, the materials that were used and everything about it was pristine and built to last, but built with dignity so that people who were there, that they had dignity as it relates to the open space, the uh, open courtyards, etc., with the high rises built into the, the hills like uh, our city center, a pride for Marin County. Now, where I fit into all of this is, I'm gonna fast forward, uh, in about well, 2012, but prior to, in Lewis's right, since 2009, Marin County has had their eyes on moving on Marin City. Um, and it's cost me, personally, uh, in 2011, uh, for standing up, I, um, they tried to evict me three times in one year. Uh, but I'm still standing, thank God. And so, uh, but with that being said, well, they took away our resident council's right. We had to go to federal court in order to be able to stand here today. In 2014, the, uh, in federal court, we got our rights restored. We have our elections timely, but we still don't have a place to hold meetings. But we use Women Helping All People, and we make it work until God sees fit to do something different. But it was in 2013 that I, you know, start really appreciating more Golden Gate Village, and I said to myself, why? If the Civic Center is on the National Register, why can't Golden Gate Village be on there? And so with, you know, I thought about it for about a year, two years actually, and then um, decided to make a move in 2015. But then that was after we had already began a plan for Golden Gate Village, knowing the situation as it relates to the repairs that were needed. So I saved my little money and uh, hired one of the best uh, historical architects to do our HRE. And we found out through research that Golden Gate Village is actually three out of four criteria in terms of historic eligible. In 2015-16, um, um, my second oldest daughter who's in Senegal and from Senegal wrote a proposal to the National Historic Land, Tr uh, Land Trust and we got $5,000 and with that I was able to go and there is a gentleman, Daniel Rourke, who worked with Frank uh, Aaron Green, who's a Marin City resident and he thought it an honor to be able to do the application. It was like his life work. The application was so seamless that it has SHPO with flying colors. The housing authority really got a harsh scolding for even allowing the years of neglect, which is called, you know, uh, almost against the law. So we got it on the on the um, from the state with Housing Authority fighting it all the way, but it got on that register, California, and from there to the National Register, National Register. Uh, on September in 2017, it was placed on the National Historic Register as a historic district, and that is not just including the buildings, it includes the district, the land, the property. Now, I just want to make something uh, plain to people, and that is, real quickly, is that back in that day, because you, in today's world, and we have Lily here, the density has gone up. But back in those days, it was actually, they could only build 10 units per acre, and that's why we ended up with 300 acres. And so in talking to the architect, I said, well, you know, by it being a historic district, and by now, you know, you have the ability to put more units there, 
But Golden Gate Village is caught in time because now it's on the National Register. So anything that they attempt to build would be adverse to the historic district, just number one. But we do know that there are about 60 some million dollars of renovations that need to happen. And that's why we came up initially in 2013, 2014, with what we call the resident plan of deep green renovation and retrofitting of Golden Gate Village. We went, and if in fact the housing authority would have, we went to them first, if they would have bought on to the plan then, we would have been living right now in our new renovated and retrofitted top of the line historic homes. But of course, here we are today. Now, what is the resident plan? The resident plan is just that. Deep green, renovating Golden Gate Village and bringing it up to 21st century standards. Well, how are you going to do it? Might be the question. And, well, make it simple and plain. Through the Department of Energy to make it become green, deep green. And that's one thing that the our local uh, housing authority or the board of supervisors, they lack, is the vision and innovation. Yes, HUD only gives a certain amount of money for public housing. That's why you have to step out of that and have a vision. Because without vision, the people perish. So I thank God for blessing me with a vision in terms of a way and working with a beautiful woman who is now deceased, who led the process and trained me well for the past five years in terms of how to, the how to get the, the federal dollars setting precedent not only federal dollars, now you have the, what's called the strategic growth for California. And Marin City is a transportation hub. So there's millions of dollars that are there, not just for tearing down and building new buildings, but for rehab also. There is the, the foundation like the MacArthur Foundation and for other foundations around the country that are looking for ways to save affordable housing. But I wanna make it plain that affordable housing is not affordable for the residents of Golden Gate Village. The residents of Golden Gate Village are, we're even below, extremely low. You have extremely low, very low, and low income. Low income for a family of four is $117,000 a year, where our average households living in Golden Gate Village may be $25,000 to $30,000 a year. So we would not be able to afford even affordable. So where would we go? So that's why we have no place to go, but to dig in and to reach out and tell Marin County, as in the days of our elders, that we really don't have anywhere to go. We don't wanna go anywhere. We're blessed to be where we are. We appreciate the open space, like the rest of us in this room that don't live in Marin City. We appreciate it also. And so there is a way, there is a way, and that is to step out of the old way and get innovative. And also to open up opportunities for home ownership for the residents. Low income, low income residents. And it can happen, and it can happen. I know you read the paper, but that's not what we're looking at as residents. We're looking at, because like I said, we are below, extremely low. So we need more than what is being offered as some of the HUD program. So with that being said, um, let's see. 
We need renovation, renovation, we need it now. Our resident council, we did a survey, we had about 117, and I promised Lewis two days ago that we're gonna give him the list of units that are rat infested, that are mildewed, that are uh, heating systems throughout the whole high rise that need to be replaced because people are suffering with asthma, children as well as adults, uh, heaters that in the low rise areas that haven't been cleaned out since they were installed, single pane windows, the whole works. Is that worthy of being torn down? No, not in 2019 when you have the technology that is faith that is here today. Where you and what they're not just here but across the, the world. The old relics. What do they do? They're not tearing them down. They're deep greening, retrofitting, and renovating. And I say to Marin County, this is an opportunity to turn this around. To make Golden Gate Village like the Green New Deal that the Board of Supervisors voted upon, make this your first model project because we are in line with the Green New Deal. Thank you. Keisha and Royce for a great presentation. It's now question time. I'm sure some of you have questions. Um, I ask that you keep your questions to one question uh, and keep them concise. I have a question to Keisha. Um, what stuck out when you were speaking is that there were incentives for investors, low income incentives, to build affordable housing. So that stuck out to me. Can you tell me what the difference between low-income housing and affordable housing is? Because it seems, it sounds to me like low-income communities are being used to then build affordable housing that low-income people will not be able to take advantage of. That's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> Thank you for that question. I think um, a lot of times we get caught up in the jargon and it gets confusing. So I would say that affordable housing is a very uh, broad term. It can go from public housing to uh, what we call tax credit housing to attainable housing, which may be a lower cost uh, type of housing and a higher higher income area. And then when you say low income, that is a specific term uh, defined by the government that looks at the average uh, median income for a statistical area. And so low income, correct me if I'm wrong, is 80% of the area median income. Then you have very low, which is 50% and extremely low, which is 30%. So when you talk about income, that's, that's more of a HUD definition. The state also has its own definition. Um, but affordable housing is a very broad brush that can incorporate lots of types of housing. And when we're talking about Marin County, affordable housing is, I think the last time I checked, it was like 180000 a year. So affordable housing is very high. So I'm just very concerned that So um, the Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program is designated for individuals and households earning 80% of the area median income and lower. So it's really designated for those specific families. It's not um, geared to any particular geographic location. 
And the way it works is um, with, the, with these investment dollars, we're able to rent apartments to families in that income bracket, and they pay no more than 30% of their income to household expenses. So for example, if you're extremely low, you earn 30% of whatever the average is in Marin County, and you enter into a tax credit property, you still pay no more than 30% of your income towards household expenses, so that's rent, utilities. Uh, so the investment allows us to keep the rents low. And that specific program I mentioned, the Low Income Housing Tax Credit, is targeted to families at 80% of uh, the county AMI or lower. Thank you. Hi. Um, just a quick comment on that. The median income in Marin for our household is 134000 in climbing. The median wage for jobs in Marin is 48000 That means that half the jobs pay under 48000 which is already an extremely low category. So the question I have is for you, Louis, I'm a little confused on the difference between Project Section 8 and Section 8 vouchers. It seems to me that HUD generally, I don't think it's Marin, but generally is shorting public housing because they are not paying market rate rents as they would for project-based or, for that matter, vouchers. If we were trans to transfer Golden Gate Village to another platform, would HUD pay the full rent due under either project-based or vouchers? So the short answer to that, David, is yes, it depends on the program. So you're absolutely right, over time, getting away. So for example, we get a per month uh, per unit cost for our public housing unit. So in Marin City, I, I may get $800 for rent plus capital, say $1,000 for a two bedroom unit. If I went to the Section 8 market in that same community, I'll get $2,100 for it. So you're absolutely right. HUD is encouraging us to look at different platforms. And the one we're speaking of is one of the platforms they're asking us to look at. We haven't developed a financial model, but it would make sense to get as much as we can from HUD. And to the point earlier, in this process, there are 300 families who are at, at Golden Gate Village now. Their income will not change unless their, I'm sorry, their rents won't change unless their income is changed in whatever we do in this process. So there's a commitment for that one for one and making sure that, that those families pay no more than 30%. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, there were a plethora of things that convinced in your, is it a debate or presentation? When you were referencing like consultants that you're utilizing to engage in research, um, that you based your findings in how you look forward in promulgating this process. But I don't, you didn't reference the names of the consultants that you used in this process. Do you have the names that you there's, used? There's a number of consultants we've used throughout the process. Again, HUD, HUD gives us a base of dollars to run our operations. So um, CDR is a consultant we use for the feasibility study. Um, that's the name of their company. It's the initials of the people who run the companies, uh, Rocha, um, uh, Vega, and I can't remember the C. Uh, we use the, uh, Dwayne Jones helped us with uh, community engagement. Thor Keslowski has helped us with community engagement. Um, there's a company called ICF that's helped us with the, um, with the historical preservation piece. Uh, J JCP is helping us work with, with uh, the Michaels organization to make sure that as we develop a, a plan for redevelopment that the housing authority and the community's best interest at heart. If you would like, I can provide with you a whole list of consultants we work with. Thank you. Your question? I'm sorry, 
I'll give you a follow-up question. Okay, I'm wondering if you could comment on what plans uh, you have for home ownership at Golden Gate Village. How do you think that might happen if you do? And also, before you answer that, I just want to say there's a growing group of us in Marin County who have come together to support the resident plan for Golden Gate Village. If you're interested in joining us, there's a flyer on the table out there. Please take one of them. And there's an email address you can contact us. We are intending to show that Golden Thank Gate Thank you very much. You get these on the way out. Thank you. Very good. Very good. This method that he's employing is unconscionable. This meeting has been put together with a good spirit, and he is impeding. He is impeding upon the quality eroding it with how he's handling this microphone. So I suggest that you either get someone else to oversee this process, or we can hold the microphones ourselves. Now back to my second part of my question. My understanding is that Marin City falls under the occupancies of public trust land. Is that true or false? I'm not familiar with that term at all. Okay, it would be you to investigate that. Because if by chance Marin City falls under it, then it cannot be privately owned. <laughs> Very much so. And if and if it does fall under public trust lands, anything that commences needs to preserve and for the well-being of the people who dwell upon the spaces prior to anything commencing. I, I think to the to the question, as we go through this process. HUD is in the conversation all the way. As I mentioned in my presentation, HUD is encouraging us to move from the public housing platform. So therefore, be it whatever the term was you use, ma'am, I know that HUD controls what we can and can't do with this property. And before any decisions are made about what happens through a public-private partnership or, or likewise, HUD has to speak to it. And, and it's my understanding that HUD is that government entity that speaks to it. To be fair to everybody here, I think it would be good for you and you to exchange cards so that you can communicate with one another and the rest of the people who have questions can ask. Is that okay with you? Okay, thank you. This uh, county is one of the most wealthy counties in the world. Uh, we can afford to buy a golf course, but why I want to, what I want to know is why can't you fix the squalor the residents who are living here right now. This is horrible conditions. It's oppressive. This is how the Marine Housing Authority has treated the poor at Golden Gate Village, our largest African American community, and I want to know why. And yet you called Royce and her group hostile and they just want they just want safe and clean and healthy housing and they don't have it and it's not right. It's unconscionable. Why is the question? So, the, the Housing Authority has and continues to work with our residents to address day-to-day -day needs as well as long-term capital. You were quoted in the newspaper as saying everything is on the table. And you also say that community land trust is out of the question. Could you explain that? Before? Sure. The, the comment of everything is on the table is born out of we're going to look at every available option to support us in moving this forward. So that's, that's coming. There, there's been some ongoing conversation in Marin City um, about a community land trust. And as I understand the, as I understand uh, the intent of this conversation is there's individuals who are saying, we want to take over Golden Gate Village. This is my understanding of it. So 
We want HUD to take this 300 unit property that's being run and managed by the Marin Housing Authority and hand it over to an entity that has no experience in running or managing government property. And, and what HUD has said to me, community land trusts with properties that are, that are very viable, that are within its current portfolio, that's not an option. And what I did say, this entity says, we've identified property that's not public housing, does, does not have families living on it, and says that, hey, we want support in developing a community land trust. Housing Authority, can you bring your financial wherewithal, can you bring your management wherewithal to support us in this effort? My answer was, absolutely. Thank Questions at this table. Hi, uh, good afternoon. My name is Mary Davis. Um, I am fortunate to live in Marin City. I know I'm not the face of Marin City, but I've been there about 10 years, and I have five beautiful kids and 10 grandkids. It's an amazing place to live. But about two years ago, I, I was on the resident council. I just retired from it, but I spoke in front of the uh, Board of Supervisors, and I said at the time, you guys can get $17 million to fix a roof at the Civic Center, but we can't get $60 million to, to fix these pictures that you're all looking at. And this is real, these are my neighbors, this is how they're living. And it's just not fair. We've got little kids, I'm a nurse. I know the, the health issues of what can happen from not living right. And also, the, you know, none of you, I grew up in San Salma, I'm a local girl, I went to Roman Catholic in College of Rent. But we live in a police state. We have sheriffs coming around our, every hour there's sheriffs around. And as a retired grandma, I don't feel like I should have to live in a place that is just like a police state. So I also, two years ago, I've been on, 20 years I was on a waiting list for, for Section 8 voucher. I received one about a year ago. I looked for months to find a place and I couldn't. I ended up taking, I didn't want the voucher, I stayed in Red City because I'm part of the community. So that's what I want you to know. We are a great community. We love living there. I would just want to live there for a long time. Thank you. Hi, uh, has MCE Clean Energy or Marine Marin Clean Energy uh, been interested at all in uh, all of this uh, deep sea planning stuff to make? Have they offered to help, support, or anything? Mm -hmm. That was me. Okay. <laughs> well, I can I can just say uh, this year, Board of Supervisors. They voted on a resolution uh, calling for the federal government to pass a Green New Deal and affirming its commitment, or its supervisor's commitment, to the Paris Climate uh, Accord and Environmental Sustainability. And on the second page of their resolution, um, they said that they want Whereas federal Green New Deal legislation will create a detailed mobilization plan, invest in the infrastructure and industries of the United States to sustainably meet the environmental and economic challenges of the 21st century, achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions, uh, ensure prosperity and economic security for all people, of the United States by creating sustainable 21st century jobs and green economy workforce training, secure for all people of the United States now and for generations to come, clean air and water, climate and community resiliency, healthy food, etc. Promote justice and equity by ending current, preventing future, and repairing historic oppression of indig indigenous communities, communities of color, migrant communities, depopulated rural communities, the poor, low income, low income workers, women, the elderly, the underhouse, people with disabilities and youth. This is what our Board of Supervisors voted on. And if, and, and if you look at it, listen to it, the Golden Gate Village resident plan falls into every last bit of those, those points. 
And so we're just saying to the county, don't be, you know, be equitable and make this your first project. Thank you. to that response. I don't uh, know specifically about marine clean energy, um, but I can tell you our design team is actually at Golden Gate Village right now reviewing the property. And of course, you know, we, we love your passion and we love the resident plan. You have to go deep for me. That is the wave of the future. Um, Ms. Macklemore mentioned in her presentation the Strategic Growth Council. My firm has been involved personally in securing over $45 million in funds from the Strategic Growth Council at the state level to do this deep green uh, type of retrofit, building of new housing and investment in infrastructure that supports greenhouse gas reduction. So we are 100% on board with the deep green retrofit and have the experience and going out and finding the funds available and bringing those dollars into Golden Gate Village. Hi, um, my question is, I'm hearing Marin County's pushing back, and I'm wondering if this could be approached to do an outreach at the state level. There's a lot of new legislation going on and happening to support affordable housing. And I know Mike McGuire, our local senator, has actually been working on that quite a bit. So I'm wondering if that had been talked about or looked at. Well, that, that's a good question. I, I wouldn't say that the county is pushing back because the county is actually pushing forward and saying to the housing authority, before we get to a place where this, this community, this development is inhabitable, which is by no means it right now, you need to do something different. As we continue to move forward and we develop a plan using deep green um, um, innovation, using uh, economic opportunities, working collectively with the community, we'll have to come up with a financial model. And within that model, we'll have to, we'll go to the state. Um, uh, Congressman Hoffman is paying very close attention to this process, and he's made a commitment saying, Marin, you know, Lewis Jordan, Housing Authority, Resident Council, once you come up with a plan, which we don't have right now. You come back to me as your congressman and we're gonna work to support getting you every dollar you possibly can. And that's at the federal, the state, and, and by the way, while we're, we're funded wholeheartedly by the federal government, the county has in fact put money towards supporting these efforts. Go ahead. My question is about restitution and the, racial, the legacy of the racial covenants here in Marin County. Um, I should preface this question by pointing out that the situation in Marin City is a, is a direct legacy of the racial covenants. And while uh, my great aunts were working on one side of the family, were working at Marin Ship with all the black shipyard workers, my mother's side of the family suffered under the same racial covenants that were applied viciously to black residents of Marin City before, during, and after World War II. When my family and I look at the restitution uh, provided to Japanese Americans who were interned during World War II, we see a possibility. And I'm wondering if, in the spirit of Royce McLemore's uh, desire to think bigger, should we be looking at uh, either a constitutional remedy or some sort of restitution following precedent for the Japanese Americans um, that would deed the land back to the descendants who owned the land, all the land in Marin City, because they were specifically barred from buying or even renting outside, outside of Marin City, not only before, during, and in the immediate after years of the war, prior to the 1948 Supreme Court decision that deemed the racial covenants unconstitutional, but for the extremely unusual way in which this county continued unconstitutionally to enforce those racial covenants specifically against African Americans, and we can see to a lesser extent against Asian Americans. questions. You have a question. That, that was a question. Oh, oh, okay. oh, can you consider a constitutional or a, a restitution? 
Can you consider restitution is the question based on those facts? I'm not in a position to make such a call, but I can say that, you know, I, I think that in our efforts to provide opportunity and affordable housing, not only in Marin City, but in this county in general, I think I am positioned to say that I, I would support such a charge. You know, when we talk about affordable housing again, we have one building. We have one building in, in, in Marin City that houses families. So as we talk about the notion of righting wrongs and restitutions, I challenge those of you who don't live in Marin City to ask yourself, what do you know to make sure that poor people and poor people of color can live in communities you live in and have the opportunities that you do? So I, I'll, I'll sign up to work with anyone who wants to look at correcting those kinds of issues in housing and employment and education and I'm not necessarily sure that's the government's job as much as it's all of our jobs to make sure that we're valuing diversity and, and, and we're making sure that this community has equity. Thank you. Next question. Hi, this is a question for Royce McLemore. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, we met several times with Congressman Huffman. I uh, distinctly remember him saying something about funding us once we got on the historic preservation on the National Register. Would you, uh, do you remember uh, what Congressman Huffman did say about getting funding for this project? Uh, yes, I had the opportunity to um, meet with him along with other uh, residents from Marin City twice. The last time that, next to the last time that I met with him, we were at the housing office, and uh, he said that if you were able to get Golden Gate Village on the National Register, that I would do everything that I can to bring federal dollars to, uh, to Golden Gate Village. On Veterans Day two years ago, I saw him after Golden Gate Village was on the National Register, and I called him out. I said, well, we did it. He said, did what? I said, Golden Gate Village is now on the National Register as a historic district. So he said, looked at me. I said, well, you know what you said? He said, what did I say? I said, you said that if it got on the National Register that you would bring all the federal dollars to Golden Gate Village. He looked at me and said, you know, I thought I was watching what I say around you. And he's been a man of his word, I must say, because I haven't talked to him since that Veterans Day in 2017. So this is another reason why I'm here today for you in this room to reach out to our congressman, to reach out to your, your representative who sits on the Board of Supervisors, to reach out to them and let them know, you know, you need to really honor what you made a resolution to, and let's start with Golden Gate Village. Yes, the uh, Strategic Growth Council, this woman right here says they got $45 million for the work that they did for new buildings. <clears throat> Can get the same thing for rehabilitation as well. It's not just for building new buildings, it's also for, uh, for rehab. And lastly, I wanna say don't, you know, I'm not against affordable housing, not at all. Marin City uh, in the 90s, with the Marin City USA, when we built the Ridgeway of Apartments, three, 300 apartments, that was Marin City's contribution to this county for affordable housing. So what I'm saying is that the affordable housing definitely needs to be built, but it needs to be built throughout this county that Marin City should not have to even be threatened with bearing the, co the cost of being of, of creating a disparate impact for this county 
by overpopulating and the bringing in more density. We're more dense than Sausal, well, more dense than Mill Valley, as well as Strawberry. Spread the wealth we have. Thank you. Thank you so much for being able to tell us more about the housing issues at Holy Gate. My question is, what is the relationship between the economics and Marin Transportation Authority and uh, the whole APAG and Bay Area with what they're trying to do for housing? And then what do they do for renovations of historical structures? Thank you. You know, as we look again at developing a plan, which we don't have right now, and once a plan is developed, coinciding with that will be a financial model. And I think Tisha would say, we're going to go to every possible entity available. You know, so if within the, the redevelopment, you, if there, you just five listen to me. You're just rude, sir. You're just rude. You know, um, we're going to look for every possible dollar. If there's within the redevelopment structure, if there's opportunity to leverage education, we will. Transportation, we will. Obviously, clean energy. So, all of those things will be a part of overall. Thing. So, we have another question down here, and this one has been satisfactorily answered. You have a question? Yes, I do. Okay. Can I hold the mic? I don't need you to hold the mic. Can I hold the mic myself? You let, let, you let other people hold the mic. Hold the mic. Hold the mic. Can I hold the mic myself? Hold the mic. He's really being so much better. Thank you. Is that some people hold the mic? I was just people we had, we had a, a meeting last night. We had a, I'm, first off, my name is LaDanny Gibson. I'm also resident council vice president. We had a meeting last night with Louis Jordan and, and the Michaels people. Um, my question for Louis Jordan is, like, can we get things in writing? You know, because we keep talking and talking and talking and making all these plans and nothing get done. And in the meantime, my residents, our residents, my neighbors, they're suffering. Roaches, rats, you know, mildew, mold, you know, just things falling apart from just wear and tear over the years. And it hasn't been getting worse and worse. And I just want to know, when can we do what we need to do for our residents? That's a question. Yeah, so, so yes, we, we did meet last night. I think for the record, it's safe to say that you're, the, you're newly elected to the council. Yes, sir. And I also think it's safe to say that we have been doing things along the way. I made a commitment last night to the newly elected members of the council. We would bring them in and bring them up to date on what we have been doing. Um, the, the property is old. The property needs revitalized. It needs to be revitalized. The day-to-day -day work, we work on it every day. While someone is sitting around these pictures, pictures you don't see is what a unit looks like once we go in and clean it up and we get it ready for a new tenant. That's not what's being circulated around. You know, the, the I'm talking, thank you. The, 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 the reality, the reality is that we have, and yes, ma'am, we will continue to work with the housing, with the resident council and the tenants. Earlier, there was this mention of a list of over 117 infractions. That list is over a year old. No. You know, that, again, that, that, that's an old list that, that the housing authority has asked for to make sure that we can come in and address it. So we want to continue to work. And ma'am, as a new council member, to the extent that we can increase that communication and working to address those issues, yes, I'm committed to doing that. Okay, then I just want to correct you. I am the one that went around my community and did the surveys for these pictures that you're seeing today. Okay. I'm the one that did that, and I just did that not even 35 days ago. Well, yeah, so, I'm talking, yes, thank you. And, and, and I'm, we're willing to address those issues. I'm talking about the list of talked about receiving from the resident council 
for quite a while now, and we've got to get, but as soon as we do, I promise, we'll start addressing those issues. Thank you very much. Uh, we're out of time for more questions, unfortunately. Uh, thank you all for coming.